All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thanks for joining us today for our PropTech meetup. Uh, for those of you who I haven't met, uh, my name is David Conroy, and I'm one of the directors of emerging technology here at NAR. Uh, and I help organize this meetup uh, with my colleague, Dan Weissman. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a technology researcher, I'm a software engineer, and I'm overall just someone who's obsessed with real estate, startups, uh, emerging tech, and of course, prop tech. Uh, Dan, would you like to say a quick hello? Sure. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, Dan Weissman, the other director of emerging tech, uh, joined NAR over two years ago now. Uh, before that, I was actually in the construction tech space. Um, really heavy focus on uh, talking with folks like you and looking at business process and how tech can help support a number of things that we can improve on in the industry. I'm particularly excited to talk about computer vision today with two amazing speakers because this is a very hot topic that Dave will dive into. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, um, computer vision, it's, uh, it's one of the use cases that's like near and dear to my heart. Uh, believe it or not, one of my first jobs uh, while I was in college as a freshman or sophomore, I was working as a software engineer. Uh, and my job was to write code to analyze video streams of all of those security cameras that you see everywhere. Um, you know, those CCTV, cl closed caption or closed circuit TVs. Um, so I was working for government agencies at the time. Uh, and it was my job to write code that would do things like uh, detect license plates or uh, detect unauthorized access. Uh, and that was nearly 20 years ago now, which is a bit embarrassing to say, but it is incredible to see how far along that this tech has come since then. Um, so obviously this is something I've been following for quite a while. Uh, and what has me so excited about it to the point where uh, I wanted to dedicate an entire meetup to it um, is that we're really starting to see computer vision use cases uh, enter into real estate. Uh, and we've got, as Dan kind of teased, we've got two great speakers today who are gonna tell you exactly what they're seeing and what we can expect to see from that technology uh, in the future. Um, before we jump into those presentations, I just wanna remind everyone of the goals of this meetup group. Um, first and foremost, we're here to bring uh, folks together, right? We're trying to foster a community around prop tech and anyone uh, who's interested in learning and exploring. Uh, the second goal of this group is to provide our attendees with just an opportunity to network and make connections. Uh, obviously, it's been a tough year and a half since we launched these. Uh, you know, in this virtual setting, it can be a bit tough to make those connections, but we have already heard success stories from past attendees uh, where attending our PropTech meetups has led to job opportunities for them. So that's uh, just fantastic to hear. Uh, and then finally, the, the third goal of this meetup group is to provide you, our audience, you know, the members of this group, um, with uh, access to some of the best speakers and talent in prop tech, right? Uh, if you're not aware, Dan and I, as part of our daily job, uh, we just spend countless hours researching technology trends. We're following capital investments. Uh, you know, we're meeting startups. We meet dozens of startups a month. Uh, and we want to take all that work and research that we're doing and distill it down into these nice, you know, 45 minute webinars uh, to share that value back because we really great, uh, greatly appreciate you showing up today and your willingness to participate in, in, in these groups. So thank you for that. Uh, <clears throat> so with that, I'd like to introduce our, our two speakers today. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing both Oliver and Nathan for quite a while now. Um, again, as part of my research, I spent hours and hours talking with both of these experts today uh, on all of the um, use cases that I'm seeing in real estate, right? Um, you know, to quickly name a few, uh, things like recommendation engines, right? Is it possible to use computer vision to change how homes are searched for? Uh, or another use case that we talk about a lot, um, you know, uh, MLS compliance, right? Is it possible that issues with MLS compliance can be, um, can be prevented from happening at all using this technology. Uh, there's even other, other couple of use cases, maybe some lower level ones, like how can we make our websites more accessible for those with disabilities? Or, or how can we make sure our listings are getting more clicks because all of the images are tagged for SEO? Uh, but I'm gonna let them present on this, right? They're the experts here. Uh, I'm very, very grateful to have them. Um, I also just kind of wanted to make a quick note that 
Both our speakers today are going to be kind of coming at this from different angles. They both are going to be taking different approaches here today, right? So uh, Oliver uh, is going to be giving us a perspective from a cloud provider, right? Uh, he works at Amazon, Amazon Web Services. Uh, he's going to be speaking to us today about how computer vision can help businesses in all industries, right? Um, he's going to be talking to us a little bit about the Amazon product called Recognition, which is the name of their computer vision service, right? Uh, he's going to be talking some real life applications for recognition in real estate. Uh, and hopefully he'll uh, briefly cover how you can get access to it and how you can include it in your stack, right? Now, Nathan, on the other hand, he's going to be coming at it from uh, you know, a different angle, a different approach, right? Um, more from the startup perspective, right? So he's gonna be talking about his experiences, um, you know, what he's heard from customers, you know, how he's iterated on his approach over the years, but uh, most importantly, both presentations, uh, like all of our meetups, are gonna be educationally focused first and foremost, right? Uh, and it looks like what, uh, we should have some time for question and answers at the end as well. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd really love to, to hand it over to Oliver, who is the uh, Principal Business de uh, Development Manager at the Computer Vision Group within AWS. Uh, he's been in that role for three years now, and he focuses on helping customers implement computer vision into their businesses across industries uh, like ours. Oliver, would you like to take it away? Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dan, um, for having me. This is great. I'm, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Dan and Dave are doing great stuff. Um, I can't say that I started as a real estate expert. Um, again, was focused more broadly on computer vision, but over the last, probably it's been about six months now, have given me a lot of great insights into the, the real estate world and to Dave, as Dave alluded to, since that time, almost, you know, like serendipitously, that has really become, come to the forefront for recognition and for, for our service as well, which I'll, recognition which I'll talk about um, as a need for some of those use cases that that Dave mentioned. So let me share my screen quickly. All right. Let, okay. Can people see this? Yeah, we got you. All right, cool. So um yeah, so uh, so I'm I'm the business development manager for Amazon Recognition. I'll get into that in a second, but basically it's an, an AI service from AWS, and I'll kind of talk about where that fits in. But I, I wanted to just start quickly by like, why is this important? Like, I think we've you know since I started in computer vision, I used to work at a startup here in San Francisco, and we've come a long way. So I've probably been in this space for about seven years, and we've come a long way. Since then, and, and I, in the beginning, a lot of it can feel like when you hear about this, sometimes like, oh, this is, you know, I, I don't understand this. Why is this important? And so I just wanted to sort of encapsulate this and kind of set the tone, which is that, you know, images and videos are really exploding. And, and all of us on this meetup are partly responsible. If you have a uh, social media account, you know, we are uploading content every day and it goes somewhere. And that content means things as well. So businesses across industries um, are finding new ways to, um, and need to find new ways to sort of grapple with that for a lot of different reasons. And I think one of the most interesting is that it really gives them a good touch point or insight into who their customers are and what they like. Um, a lot of what we respond to as humans can come from the visual and image data we consume. So, and, and on top of that, it's just massive. So I just picked an example here from Twitch since they're um, you know, an Amazon company, but they had 2 billion hours of streaming video that got played out in June, which is just staggering. No amount of human review could ever keep up with that kind of, um, you know, with that kind of volume. And so what's happening is there are lost insights in there. This video is getting streamed, but they don't know all the time what's happening. And so that's, that represents sort of a miss when it comes to business opportunities. Uh, because within that visual metadata and also audio too, there's really interesting information happening. Um, and if they were able to extract those insights, they could do things like better recommendations, better targeting. So this is kind of where AIML 
and particularly computer vision comes in because it's really critical for doing all of this at scale and then sort of boosting your human workforce or augmenting them to do even more that they can do. So like I said, computer vision is really horizontal. Um, again, before becoming, before becoming somewhat knowledgeable on real estate from Dave and Dan's under their tutelage, um, we've been focusing on a lot of these other ones. Um, and again, back in my startup days, like media and entertainment is often seen as like a real bedrock for computer vision because they just create so much content, social media in that same vein. Um, again, looking at things like photo search functionality, recommendations, content moderation, making sure that inappropriate content's not being uploaded. But again, across the board, advertising and marketing, e-commerce, automotive, manufacturing, gaming, education. And now we come to real estate. And um, this is, as I mentioned, a growing space. I, I, um, Nathan will, will probably hit on it too. Um, for computer vision because, again, many of these platforms from MLSs to, to site aggregators, photos is the key medium. I was joking with Dan, well, not joking, I was telling a real life story that I'm actually moving to the Midwest um, from San Francisco at the beginning of September. And a key driver, uh, along with price and location, were the photos of the place. Like we looked at those and decided, me and my wife, hey, maybe that's a place we want to visit. Now, there comes the debate. Were those photos in the right place? What were they denoting? Did they have the best quality, et cetera? And that's where the sort of computer vision can come in. And then I just wanna hit quickly on the benefits to um, when you have so much volume and you're getting inundated with photos, you really can see a material difference when you add AI into things from time savings, you are now able to process things faster, cost savings, um, you can diminish the amount of human uh, review needed. You can also scale. Again, you really can't, when you're getting into millions, even hundreds of millions of images or videos, no amount of human workforce could really keep up with that. And then the bottom two for me are the most interesting because if you understand what's happening in the images and the videos, you can better understand that metadata. You can create new user experiences um, and you can also then create new revenue streams and most of the time, people are excited to talk to me if I can tell them how they can make money with technology. Um, so new revenue streams are important. Um, okay, so that's kind of just a ah, super high level background on the importance of sort of AI ML, but the subset that we're talking today about computer vision. So at AWS, we have uh, a service for computer vision called Amazon Recognition. We that is dubbed an AI service because it is um, sort of managed by Amazon. We are building the models and then making them available to you. You do not need to be a machine learning practitioner or a data scientist to be able to use it. You just need to have some photos in S3 and you can send them to one of these APIs, which I'll explain briefly, and you will get visual metadata returned to you. So. Recognition also isn't then just one thing, it's actually several things. And those several things are the APIs or the sort of interfaces between the model. So we have a model for object scene and activity detection. So again, important in real estate for a lot of reasons, detecting, you know, is that a picture of the, you know, kitchen? Is, is that the bedroom, you know, house, pool, those kind of things. We also have something called custom labels, which I'll dive into a little bit deeper in the next couple of slides where you can actually bring in your own data and create your own um, models for object detection and image classification, which is really cool because often, and in, in my time as, as you know, at recognition, we've heard this field feedback from real estate that often nuance is needed. So I need to know that it, it's a granite countertop and I need to know it's recessed lighting. So there's important sort of object detection that needs to be done that's very niche to a specific industry. We also have an, a model for content moderation that is looking for things like nudity, um, gore, violence, uh, rude gestures, any, almost literally almost any platform that has a user generated content component uh, needs to have a moderation sort of 
system in place and and many turn to to recognition for that because of the prospect of having unwanted images we also have a text api i have a couple customer examples in real estate to, to highlight that but that detects text and images because of the pandemic ppe detection was something we we put together not really needed here we have some apis for face detection and search celebrity detection again lesser of, of lesser importance in real estate but available um we also have video segment detection looking for things like color bars and credits very much a media and entertainment feature uh live streaming capabilities and then person pathing looking at sort of the movements of people that's a good analytics tool again in things like sports so we have this whole sort of set of apis at aws so more broadly our ethos is sort of to put AI in the hands of every developer. So it's very developer centric. It's not, none of these by themselves are a solution. They're tools that you can build into a solution um, as, as you sort of see fit um, or based on how you want to develop your offering. So I just wanted to touch on custom labels quickly too. Um, one of the main feedback we got from our pre-trained labels API was that it wasn't nuanced enough or that people wanted to build their own. So we took that feedback and we created a service where you can take your images, either images that you have, or now there's a lot of cool like data exchanges. There's even one from Amazon where you can buy data sets. You can bring in those annotated images and literally with the click of a button, train a model to detect those things. And the API, the API endpoint is tied to your account. So it's effectively yours. And really cool because you can do so many different things with it. Um, and here are some of them you can do. And again, I'm going to not get too technical in this, just giving you a high level so you can sort of visualize it, but you can do sort of like what's called like single label classification. So, okay, this is a picture that has produce in it. So the next time I see that kind of rack at the market and I run it by the API, it'll tell me it's produce versus some other aisle that I'm not interested in, say I'm in a sort of like market analytics business. You also have multi-label classification. There are times where in an image, there are many things happening. So in this one is an example of mountains and dusk. And then also there may be object detection from you know, characters in an animated show. We've done some work with PBS um, to some of those real estate items I mentioned. Maybe there are specific items in the kitchen that need to be labeled a certain way and it's a must to know that that's exactly what it is as opposed to maybe a more generic um, sort of label like just this is the kitchen or this is the countertop i need to know that it's some special type of italian marble or something like that so now okay high level why is computer vision important what's amazon kind of doing there here's the here's the real like interesting stuff and um this is just a small subset of like what we've seen sometimes in talking to Dave and Dan. I mean, there's so many others that are even beyond sort of like kind of things we have in place today. Uh, that Those are great opportunities for data science in general, if, if there are any data scientists on the call, because, you know, vision isn't the only problem you have in real estate to solve. There are so many different data points that you can collect from, again, things like price, location, historical analysis of that, you know, neighborhood of uh, crime data, et cetera, that you can build a model to do a lot of cool stuff with. But from a computer vision standpoint, and I think, uh, you know, Nathan will also um, have some opinions here too, but this is kind of just what we've been, we've been seeing, um, which is that, like I mentioned, really around, again, photos, and in some cases, videos, there's been a lot more virtual touring, of course, because of the pandemic. Content search and discovery is a, is a big one. So not only, that's often not just the case for day one. Most businesses are in, you know, have been in business for a while, which means they have large archives of, of images and videos. And most of the time, they don't have a good handle on what's in every one of those images, or at least the images tied to a specific property. So they run computer vision to try to sort of assess what's there. What were the unique features of this house that got sold? two years ago in this neighborhood. Um, and so I can better search those photos. Um, then from sort of like a, the, the new images that you receive, sort of automated metadata generation. So the minute I get a new photo, run it through one of the models and I'll already 
have it tagged for the things in the image. As Dave mentioned, content recommendations, I think this is gonna be a big one. Um, again, just coming off going through a home purchase, none of it was recommended to me based on the visuals. It was recommended to me based on where it was and the price. But in every house I click on, there are multiple visuals. And without psychoanalyzing myself or my wife, there's probably a reason we gravitated towards the home we picked. And uh, thinking of where I live, there are Victorian homes, there are Edwardian homes. That matters. That matters to how people review things. And I think we may see more of that done on the image um, content that's uploaded along with a house. And computer vision is then is great for that so that there's not so much manual effort. Content moderation is also really important. Uh, I'm learning that there are, a lot, as it's not, it's not untypical. There are rules and regulations in the real estate industry. And this isn't just like moderation based on inappropriate images, although we have some in real estate that are using that. This is more like moderation for text or not letting things be on photos that, that aren't supposed to be there. Um, there's also redaction elements. We have this come up a lot in e-commerce as well, where somebody who means to be doing well forgets that their camera's pointed at them and they actually upload a picture of their face and nobody wants that responsibility for storing that on their site. So they wanna be able to detect that the face is there and redact it. And then a new one, and I haven't talked to Dave about this, it goes, it's kind of sort of like on the side of, of the sort of realtor industry that you guys are in is damage analysis. This is more for the insurance community. Um, We've seen this really growing in the auto space, but in the last month, I would say I've had a number of calls on, hey, can I see what the level of damage to my roof was before and after a storm? Can I build a model for that? And, and that answer is absolutely, you can do that sort of like before and after or damage classification. Um, and so, and then uh, I'm almost done and being conscious of time. I just wanted to highlight two examples of, of customers that we have that are public references. One is REA Group in, um, uh, they do a lot of work in Asia and, and ANZ, Australia, New Zealand. They have a sort of like a marketplace. They actually own a several marketplaces for, uh, you know, uh, looking at real estate and they use recognition, particularly text detection for compliance use case. So again, making sure that when photos come in, they, they meet the minimum bar for getting uploaded to the, the website. And they, uh, what I, again, what is nice about this use case is that they tried to do something themselves, but found that going with recognition was the way to go. And what you'll find is that, you know, businesses like this unique IP really doesn't live in computer vision. So they, they would like to find a solution as opposed to having to build it themselves. And that's the, that there's a really cool market and ecosystem and I, and Nathan will speak about that too, because his company is uh, part of that, coming out of that to support the need that customers have in this space when they don't have the data science teams or don't want to build it themselves. Um, and same, uh, interestingly enough, this is another um, public reference, very similar. Um, again, it shows you the, the sort of need for content moderation, how important it is, even not just in the US, but abroad, this is a company um, that's a, a large property listing company in Hungary, and they um, had to do the same thing, that, uh, particularly contact details um, of, of people being put on the photos to try to circumvent the platform are, protect, are potentially problematic. And what I liked was that they were able to really have a material impact on their cost reduction. Um, so these are publicly referenceable. Again, Dave and Dan, I, I'll make sure to, to get this deck to you in the link so that people don't have to scramble to write anything down. And then um, uh, an important distinction, and this is what Dan was making earlier, you know, recognition is, again, it's like kind of, it's an AWS as a whole, we're kind of like focused on the developer. So all of this, if you have an AWS account is at your fingertips, uh, we have a console, you can just go sign in, take a few photos. I do this all the time to see, you know, how things will turn out. Just take a few photos, run them through. You literally just hit upload and the model will give you a feedback. And it's always pretty cool to play around like that. If you have, if you are a developer and know how to set things up via the CLI and get the SDK set up, go for it. We have a developer guide. And then as always, you know, like, please feel free to reach out to me. 
I'll make my email and my emails here, but Dan and Dave can also facilitate if you guys have questions for me. Um, so I'll stop there and I'll pass it over to, to Nathan. Not sure, Dave, if you want to do the segue, but uh, yeah. appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, Oliver. I I had planned when we started this uh, to save the questions for the end, but I've just got a couple selfishly myself that, that I'd like to get out there. I've actually used the SDK uh, personally. It's really nice for uploading photos. You can actually do the, the S3 photo upload and recognition in a single call. Uh, but you mentioned a couple of things that stuck out to me that um, I'm selfishly just going to ask now because I'm curious. Uh, you, you mentioned a couple of things like uh, revenue streams, right? That always gets people interested. And you also mentioned uh, like a data marketplace. Uh, I noticed in the attendee list, we have some uh, MLS compliance people and ho hopefully they, they've tuned out at this point, but is, would it be possible <laughs> if there are people on this call who own large quantities of real estate data that they could potentially monetize it on something like a, a, a AWS warehouse if they have their yeah. limits to it? So I would say at a high level, yes. I'm actually funny enough, I'm doing a webinar next week. This isn't a shameless plug with Shutterstock who have, because they sit on a lot of data, they have worked with, it's a new sort of service newish called Amazon Data Exchange, where third parties can bring data that is already annotated and is high quality and make it available for sale. And so it's a really good question because I don't know if any of those third parties have real estate data, but speaking of revenue streams, to your point, Dave, um, that could totally be a plausible way to drive some some revenue. I can after this send you um, some stuff on the data exchange um, as well. But yeah, really good question. Yeah, thank you, and, and um, thanks for humoring me there. Uh, all right, so we can do more Q and A at the end. I've seen some come in through the chat. Uh, keep doing that. I've got I wrote about a dozen questions down here too, and I talk to Oliver every week, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, but next up, um, I'd like to introduce Nathan Brandon, who's the VP of Product and Sales at Recipe.ai. Um, you know, having worked with Nathan in the past, he's just he's a the tech optimist. You know, he spent his career leveraging AI to make uh, people's lives easier. Uh, I know for a fact he's been working with some of the most innovative real estate groups across the globe. Uh, and I'm really interested to get his perspective on this technology and what he's seeing through his work, uh, through the lens of his work at recipe.ai. Uh, Nathan, would you like to take it away? Yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Dave. Um, it's uh, really exciting to be here. I see a lot of familiar faces actually in the audience. So I hope that uh, you guys don't get too bored seeing some things that you may have seen before. And Oliver, I wanna thank you. It's always nice when you're doing a presentation alongside someone else that um, you know everything they say coincides with what I've put together. So I think you gave a great overview of what uh, you know computer vision is, where there are opportunities in real estate, and that goes well with uh, a lot of the things that I want to cover. So uh, Dave asked me to talk about a lot of the use cases that we're seeing in real estate, and so that's going to be the majority of my presentation. And fortunately, um, as I mentioned, Oliver covered a lot of the uh, more technical details about how it all works. So where I like to typically start when talking about computer vision, which is one of my favorite topics to talk about, is how important are property photos? Oliver talked about uh, when he was searching for a house, the, the details that he got from simply looking at a photo. And that's really something that I think resonates with a lot of people of just how much information you can get when you see a simple image. But I'd also like to thank uh, Dan and Dave, because NAR did a study on this as well, to see what was the biggest purchase driver when they were looking at potential home buyers. And they saw the same thing where photos were actually the most important, more important than virtual tours, virtual showings. And I think it's just because of the amount of information that you can glean from one photo as a human, that it's really powerful what can be contained in those images. Unfortunately, there's a problem with this. Uh, if we look at the US alone, there's more than 1 million property photos that are uploaded every day. And this isn't even talking about the amount of video data that's being uploaded. And uh, no matter how quickly you can read, how quickly you can look at images, there's certainly no way to keep up with this scale of images. And that's really the, the founding principle of what recipe.ai was you know, designed to solve. You know, can we use this technology, computer vision, or how AI understands images to really solve these real estate problems? And at this point, we've been doing this for uh, six years. So we launched in 2015 out of Barcelona and also have an office over in Dallas. And we've been working with a lot of the companies in this space, 
particularly the ones who are more looking on how to innovate and solve problems that may have existed for a really long time. And through this, uh, we've been able to develop a lot of solutions that help solve a lot of the problems that we're seeing. So it's great to see a little bit of the difference between Amazon, who's created these very robust solutions that have really been able to solve problems you know, all over the world, whereas a lot of what we did was starting with specific problems and looking at how can we work with our partners to help solve those. And I think now we're at a great point where we're both meeting in the middle and realizing that there's so much here to do that we're really only scratching the surface. So some of the areas that we see AI or computer vision empowering real estate professionals really cover the entire life cycle of what we see as a real estate or a home. So looking at pre-purchase, this is looking at things like listing creation. Can we accelerate or enhance the ability that listings are created? Can we enhance the way that people are searching for properties? Can we personalize the way that they're searching for properties? Everyone has unique interest. And then once that property is actually listed, can we help market it? Can we help create ads in a way that's more efficient than what's being done currently? Looking at the purchase space, uh, this is maybe a little bit more related to valuation. Can we help better um, understand what a property is worth? or working with people maybe in the appraisal space, uh, an area that's not likely to be replaced by any type of computer vision or AI, but can certainly be enhanced. Can we help appraisers uh, more effectively or more efficiently analyze properties? Can we help save them time uh, and really help them come to a better conclusion of what a property may be worth? And then a growing area, particularly with the lower interest rates recently is the, the investor, the person looking to make uh, you know, perhaps a second home, a third home that they may be looking to fix and flip. There's a lot of opportunity here. And these people are quite data hungry when it comes to how can they get an upper hand on what a value of a property may be. And then in post-purchase, we have some other topics that, uh, you know, Oliver also alluded to insurance. Uh, is there a way to easily look at where, you know, there may be a risky prop uh, property or in the event of such a catastrophe or something like that, can we quickly identify what properties may have been affected? If I'm looking to a renovation project, you know, what can I put into this project and what can I potentially get out? Can we help calculate that looking at images? And if I have done those renovations, is there a way for me to refinance my home and potentially have that reflected in what my property may now be worth? Which then goes to the point, okay, great. These are the areas we can help, but what can we actually do with photos? And there's a lot of different things that we can do, uh, starting with, you know, what room are we looking at? Are we looking at a living room? Are we looking at the backyard? Are we looking at the front of the home? What features may be present within those photos? Are we looking at hardwood floors or carpet? Is there a fireplace? Is it stone? Is it brick? What compliance things can we detect? All right, we know that a lot of MLSs have different guidelines. Can we detect the things that they're looking for and do that in a quicker or more automated way? Then looking at more abstract things such as style, uh, is there a Cape Cod exterior? Is it a modern interior? These things may be very important to humans who may be looking for homes, but it's quite hard to quantify because these things are so um, you know, interpreted differently across different markets. And condition or quality, you know, is a home in disrepair? Is it luxury? This is something that is uh, valuable both from a search perspective, but also an evaluation perspective. And really this is just the, the start of the list. I think computer vision also touches on how we can auto enhance photos. Uh, can, we, can, can we create captions that can help from an SEO perspective? Can we identify similar properties? There's really a lot of nuanced things as you go into the specific problems that we may encounter and computer vision can help solve all of these. So now I want to talk about a couple different areas where computer vision is specifically solving and focusing on things that aren't in the future, but all of these examples that I'm about to talk about are actually being done in some capacity today. So one of the things that uh, we see quite commonly is agents upload uh, a property, they upload a bunch of photos, but because there are so many photos and it's maybe not the thing that they love most about their job, they're not providing any per image specific information. So in this case, we can see a user uploading uh, their, their photos to a property portal called Idealista, the largest portal in Spain. And as those images are being processed, uh, they're actually getting tagged with whatever the relative room type is that is available um, from the photo. The agent can then change that, but basically this is guaranteed to generate a tag for each listing while also allowing compliance to be done in such a way that uh, they have checks that say, all right, if it's a three bedroom, two bathroom property, uh, we wanna make sure there's at least three photos of the bedroom and two, property, two photos of the bathroom. Another thing that can happen when someone uploads a photo is that the photo just isn't that great, not because it's uh, of a property that's not nice, but because maybe uh, they were moving their hand, maybe they're taking it with a 10 year old smartphone, but uh, you know, the end result one way or another is that it looks a little bit like this photo here on the left. With computer vision, we can instantly identify these photos that are of lower quality 
And not only that, we can also look at enhancing them automatically to provide a much better representation of what that property may look like. And I think what's uh, great for both, you know, potential home buyers, but also people trying to sell homes, we know from uh, working with our partners that properties with these higher quality images sell up to 50% faster and for more money. Another area that uh, is based on computer vision, but also takes a little bit of other fields of AI is the ability to create automatic descriptions of properties. So the description you're seeing here was written by an AI. It's looking at not only the listing information, the photo information, but also things like the location information. So it's really combining a lot of different fields of AI to, prevent, to provide a service that's uh, very helpful for users. Most agents we've spoken with don't like writing their own listing descriptions. So the great thing about this is that rather than them putting this off for a day or two days and potentially uh, having that property be on market for a lower amount of time, these can be created instantly. Also with AI, you can not only create one description instantly, you can create multiple descriptions instantly. And these can be looking at different aspects uh, or different ways of phrasing the property. Do we want something that's a bit more bare bones? Do we want something that's a bit more Shakespearean? This allows a little bit of a personal touch in what can be an AI process. And also uh, quite importantly, we can make sure that these are FHA compliant. So compliance is a very big important thing with very big consequences and being able to ensure that something can be created uh, and that complies with any type of regulations is very important. And speaking of compliance, we can also look at compliance at the photo level. So uh, there's different solutions that can do different things uh, such as identify duplicate photos or listings. Uh, we've seen in some MLSs that a lot of agents may really love that uh, photo of the clubhouse or pool in a neighborhood, but they may not have been the one who took that photo. And so if they try to use that photo, we wanna be able to detect that and understand that, hey, uh, there's a potential copyright violation here. Let's make sure that this is caught before it's caught for us by someone uh, who may be a little bit uh, more expensive to deal with. Additionally, we talked about trying to detect watermarks or text. Uh, there's a lot of different regulations here. And particularly in the commercial space, there's a lot of consequences if you're using images that are not, uh, you're not permitted to use. Um, this is something that a lot of MLSs or portals uh, certainly want to control, even if it's not you know, intentional or not done with any malice. And then there's also a lot of very specific uh, guidelines from MLS. So things like, all right, we don't want any agent branded signpost or we don't want any faces. Uh, these things can all be caught as well to really make that job easier for that compliance staff. And what we've seen here is that depending on the compliance process in place, having this automated step can really reduce the amount of man hours that are needed. And what we've seen is really not, uh, which is quite interesting is that with this reduction in man hours on the existing task, rather than using that to reduce compliance teams, it's actually been used to expand the scope of what compliance they detect. Almost every compliance team I speak with uh, tells me that uh, there's a lot of things that they wish they could enforce, but they simply don't have the time or resources to take care of it. Once that listing is then uploaded in a compliant manner, we can have And we've lost uh, Nathan here for a second. Yeah. Uh -oh. uh, we'll, we'll give him a, a minute to reconnect. Um, I didn't even realize that was possible. I, I, I knew that they could do the, uh, the listing descriptions based on photos, like that makes sense to me, but the fact that they were able to do that FHA compliance on top of the listing description, that really, that really blew me away. Um, while, while we wait for Nathan to, uh, to reconnect, um, well, I had a whole list of questions for him. I guess those aren't useful right now. Um, Oliver, are you still there? Uh, I've got some questions for you as well. Definitely. Shoot. Yep. Cool. Um, so we already talked about the data exchange. Thanks for, for dropping uh, dropping that link. Um, my, my first question was, you mentioned that recognition can be used for just more than photos. Um, uh, you said that it could be used on live video streams as well. Can you talk a little bit about how that works? Um, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like, is it just, um, is it annotating the video? Like, will I end up with like a listing description at the end of it, or at least the, uh, a written description of what was in the video? How does that work? Yeah, so there's sort of two approaches you can take to video. One is, one is stored video. So we have functionality on stored video. Um, and again, you're getting effectively sort of metadata tags for the different timestamps on that video. Um, live streaming's similar, uh, but we don't have actually, we don't have as many 
APIs that function on live streams. So um, our, our, our face API is one that does um, labels as well. But what we tend to see with live streams actually is that um, the end users are often using something like FFmpeg or something to sample the frames out of the live stream and send those to recognition for analysis because you know, in the video world, often, um, uh, depending on your use case, not every, you, you don't need to analyze at the sub-second level, like every 500 milliseconds if you're doing two FPS, uh, you, you, there's not that much movement in the video. Um, so we can do stored and live streaming, but um, some of our users do chop up the video and send it to image. But the output effectively is the same. It, it's a JSON file format. Um, and you would it would just be linked to to the now the time or the or the uh, timestamp if you will on the video. So it's like metadata on the video. Okay, yeah, that, that's interesting. Like we're seeing more and more startups these days doing like video first listings when it comes to rental and things like that. Uh, it looks like Nathan is back. Um, cool. Uh, we're gonna hand it back over to him. Thanks, thanks for uh, helping us uh, there, Oliver. Uh, Nathan, yeah. take it away again. Sure. Hey, thank you, and I apologize for that. Uh, I had a sudden power outage, which uh, was you know, quite convenient timing. So I am here. I will keep my video off as it is uh, pitch black. That's I'm actually the last the thing we saw was um, you sitting in the dark and then it froze. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, please continue. Great. So let me share my screen again. And uh, I'm not quite sure where I left off. So. Um, uh, just you were right. You, you were right. Yeah. Search. So, yeah, search. you were right here. Okay. Nah. So uh, Oliver is breaking up a bit for me, but I hope that's also not my my computer's fault. Um, are you guys able to hear me? Okay, Dan. Yeah. We yeah, we're good. Go for it. Okay. So looking at property search, uh, property search really hasn't been innovated much in the past probably 10 years since uh, I think map-based search got invented. And what you commonly see is a request to specify budget, specify bed space, specify the square footage and location. But what property search is not that great at today is, all right, say I'm a user who uh, has really been cooking a lot more ever since the pandemic happened. I know that I need a larger kitchen and I'd love a spacious kitchen island at my next property. Unfortunately, when we look at the results that are returned today, what we typically see is uh, the default photo um, from an agent. And this is most commonly the front of a home. But what if you could specify the default photo that appears in your search results? In this case, I wanna look at only properties that have a kitchen and more so than that, I only wanna see properties that actually have a kitchen island. Now I get this nice personalized search results where I'm seeing, all right, here are the properties that meet all my other criteria that also have kitchen islands. And beyond that, I get to see that actual kitchen photo and kitchen island in the search results. I can easily browse through 20, 30, or even 50 different properties in the same amount of time it would take for me to click into two to three properties and actually scroll through the photos. Another common thing that we see is, uh, all right, I, I don't really know how to articulate what I like to an agent. Uh, I know it when I see it, but I don't really have any way of describing what I want. And this is really hard for someone to help you when you can't articulate what you may be interested in. So what we can do is actually take a photo, uh, say a photo that's been provided out of seed images, a photo that's been pulled off of Pinterest, off of Instagram. And given that photo, we can immediately source the properties that are most visually similar. What's great about this solution is that as opposed to some of the other things you can do with computer vision, where you're looking at, all right, you know, we know that this is a kitchen, we know that this is got hardwood floors. This solution actually doesn't use any type of technology like that. It's looking at a bunch of more abstract things that help you capture these hard to describe aesthetics. You know, what is the layout? What are the colors? What are these things that I know I like, but I really can't put into words what they are. And taking these types of experience, we're also seeing sites do a lot of cool things to enable new ways for people to search. So a lot of people don't want to mess with their core search functionality because if it's not broke, uh, you know, don't fix it. But um, what we're seeing instead is a lot of people creating alternative search capabilities. So Boomin is a company or a portal in the UK 
It's one of the most well-funded challenger portals uh, competing against the incumbents. And what they've created in addition to their normal search, search capabilities is what they call their property playground. And this screenshot that you can see here is showing that rather than having people search for specific properties, it allows them for search for specific rooms or to search specific boards. And you may see this as being quite some other things like Pinterest or House, which are more inspirational sites. But what they're able to do here is leverage all of these images they have that are in the active inventory of a market. We can actually do those same things uh, for users uh, that we're seeing there. And this is great because it allows these sites to gain uh, large amounts of data on their users while also creating a much more unique user experience. Uh, another way where we're seeing this is with a company called homes.co.new zealand so one of the largest portals in new zealand they've similarly created a alternative search capability that allows users to look at uh, you know photos of different room types that are looking across all the properties that are in the active inventory but beyond that they're also partnering with a company called meter 10 which you can think of as the home depot of new zealand and what's great is that with these sponsored posts that are being displayed they're actually all based off of the types of photos that the users are looking at. So if a user is only looking at luxury properties, the sponsored posts are going to be tailored towards a more uh, upscale user. If the user is looking at properties that may have damages, then the sponsored posts are going to reflect um, things that are targeting refurbishments or repairs. And this uh, you know, collaboration between these two companies actually won a nationwide award. Uh, for its ability to improve kind of this relationship between marketers and the users that they're being marketing, that they're marketing to. And then uh, another thing that, that we've seen be quite important, though perhaps a little bit less sexy, is what we call SEO optimized image captions. The captions that are returned for each of the photos that you see here is what's returned by the AI when you pass it an image. Um, this text is taking all the different things that we've um, extracted out of the image and then combining it into diverse phrases. And this is very important because uh, for a couple of reasons. So one of the things we've seen is that um, in ADA or the Americans with Disabilities Act, it requires that every image on a website has descriptive alt text. That alt text field is actually what's read by screen readers when someone with a visual impairment is using uh, the internet. And it's something that's very important to actually provide helpful context to that user when they're navigating a site. Additionally, it's very important for Google. Google's web crawlers are searching through uh, sites and looking for images, and uh, they don't really have a lot to go on. Typically, they're looking at the context around that image and maybe the title of that file. But uh, with real estate, you have a bunch of images all together, and not only that, you have a bunch of sites with all the same images. So being able to add this descriptive context can be really helpful to helping your site stand out uh, among the other sites with similar content. And then the last space that I really wanna talk about is the valuation space. Uh, ever since COVID started, this has been an area of uh, quite a lot of growth uh, that we've seen because it's been so difficult to actually see properties in person. So one of the things that's really difficult when it comes to doing any type of model that's valuating properties across an entire market, how that differs from neighborhood or zip code um, across that market. So what we've been able to develop is basically a model that looks at every image of a property on a scale of one to six or disrepair to luxury, and then able to calculate all those properties or calculate all those photos together to generate easy to consume property level scores. Uh, and so in this case, actually at the property level, but also focusing on specific aspects such as the kitchen, bathroom, interior, and exterior. And in this case, there's a variety of things that can be done uh, with this information. So one is something like measuring curb appeal. Uh, everybody knows that if you go into a neighborhood, there's benefits to being maybe the nicest property in that neighborhood or, or disadvantages to uh, perhaps even disadvantages in that case, or um, you know, valuation affecting uh, conditions if you're you know, at the bottom end of that spectrum as well. Uh, this, can also, this data can also be really helpful to understand you know, what is a good fix and flip opportunity. Do we know and it can also be helpful to find the most appropriate comps. Uh, one of the most important things when trying to understand how properties may compare to each other is what are the properties that are similar and what do they sell for? But if a property has been recently renovated or a property you know, has 30 year old appliances, this is a big factor in what those properties may go for. This is something that you know, is being used quite widely in AVMs. 
making this data at the property level is a big part of you know, trying to make it easy to use to be plugged in as an additional data point in these models. This is something that Zillow has incorporated into their estimate. And based on the people that we speak with, we've seen it actually uh, quite widely used across a lot of AVMs. One of the biggest challenges with AVMs historically was that they didn't account for the condition of a property. But now with computer vision, you can actually get that information at the scale you need to be able to plug into these models. Looking at the individual investor perspective and actually even seeing this automated to uh, you know, doing large scale investments as well. Uh, when you look at a property that is available, it has a list price. And as you look through those photos, you may understand, all right, there's gonna need to be work done here. You may even specialize this, specialize in this and know that, all right, for this particular property, it's gonna cost $20,000 to renovate the kitchen. It's gonna cost $15,000 for the bathroom. And you know, that's throwing another $10,000 for whatever else may need to be fixed. With computer vision, we can actually say, okay, great. You know, given that property, if it was in this condition, how much would it go in that particular market? And in this case, we actually can say, great. When we adjust the condition of this property for what it will be post renovation, we can actually see that the post renovation price and value of this property is much greater than the cost of repairs. This is a great investment for us to move forward with. And then the last area I wanna talk about when it comes to valuations is inspections. Right now, inspections are a little bit of a tedious thing. Uh, one, it's really expensive to actually make it out to a property. It's time consuming. Uh, it, there may be traffic. Um, this is all added into the cost that you ultimately have to pay. And then two, as you're going around and taking photos of a property, uh, noting things down, it can be quite difficult to um, you know, capture that information. So if we can use computer vision to help capture things automatically, we can make that workflow smarter. It also opens up the possibility of being able to leverage user photos. All right, if I can have a user take the photos that I need to make you know, whatever process that needs to be done based on the inspection, then I can save myself a trip out to that property, which ultimately leads to the need for better automated quality control. So can I actually flag and identify things that may need to be examined uh, from an inspection? Because this inspection is used for things like mortgages, uh, things like re refinances, and so it's very important that we can validate the quality of that information in those reports. So here's a quick video that shows a little bit about how this could work. In this case, we have a user who is going to uh, 4416 Sunny Dunes Drive. And with that, it's great because we can pull some of that public record information, and then we can go about that property and take photos. In this case, here are the photos that we've taken as part of that home inspection. And with those photos, we can then scan them or have them scanned in real time as the photos are being taken to pull out the relevant information that we want for our report. So in this case, we can see that in the kitchen, there are hardwood floors, a kitchen island, a beam ceiling, and all this information can be taken you know, automatically to help improve that workflow. So as a summary, I think AI sometimes is you know, a little bit scary. People think that it's trying to take everyone's jobs, but I, what we've seen in the use cases that we've worked on with people in this industry is that rather than take people's jobs, it's really meant to save those people time. And only save them time, can we actually help them improve the quality of what they're doing? And then more on the user experience side of things, can we help personalize the experience that users have? Uh, when you look at property, there's a thousand different things that are important to each user. And without using any type of AI, it's really hard to personalize that experience that they have as they navigate your site. And so, with what you've seen, I hope this kind of sparks ideas. This is really a subset of what we see uh, happening in the space. I think there's a lot of problems that can happen and a lot of things that people are doing manually that can maybe be enhanced or accelerated with the use of extracting this information out of AI. So uh, I challenge everyone to think about how computer vision can help potentially your company. And if you have any ideas or you have any thoughts, I would very much encourage you to reach out. We'd love to share what we've done with other clients. We'd love to share what we've seen in this industry. And we certainly hope that we can help solve the problems that you may be facing. So thanks a lot, everyone. I'll pass back off to Dave. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed. And I'm very sorry for the technical difficulties we had. No, no problem. Uh Wow. Um, so I, I knew computer vision was was making inroads into real estate as I was scheduled this. I didn't realize it had gone this far. Like there was multiple things on this call that I wasn't even aware that were happening. So this is really, really fantastic content. We got like three or four minutes left. I got um, we have some questions from the audience. Uh, maybe we're just going to bounce a couple off and then we'll have Dan close this out. Does that sound good? Um, my first question for Nathan, uh, you mentioned that you're working with MLS compliance teams. 
Uh, I know NAR, of course, has um, you know handbooks around how MLSs should operate. When you're talking with these different MLSs and their compliance teams, are you finding that they all have the same needs and requests? Is there some standardization around the compliance issues that they're having, or are you finding have your custom solutions for each each customer? No, so there there is broad agreement on a lot of things, uh, but there's a lot of peculiarity or specificness across the MLSs. So um, for the example, something like uh, agent signpost or for sale signs or something that a lot of MLSs don't allow. But what we've seen various, some, you know, some MLSs don't want that photo, that signpost visible at all. Others will allow it uh, if it's not legible, so you can't read the text on it. Others will allow it. if it's been blurred out while others say that no that may be representative of a certain brokerage and we don't want to have any type of brokerage you know potentially be emphasized in the listing so a lot of the rules are the same but where they draw that line there's a human touch to that and with that rather than creating completely custom solutions for each user what we've tried to do is you know catch the different things that we can uh, a lot of these things can be turned off or ignored by different users but then for the cases where there are maybe you know that human judgment call uh, we see that human as being a very important part of this compliance process and we want to return to them all the things that may be in violation, but ultimately allow them to make that final call on what may or may not be compliant. Got it. So you kind of just flag it for follow up. Um, two minutes left here. Oliver, one more question from you. Uh, I, I didn't catch during your presentation. Um, is the AWS recognition um, product uh, eligible for the AWS free tier? Yeah, so there's a free tier. We, we break our pricing up between image video and custom labels and um, each of those come with a free tier they're different for each but yeah there's they all come with a free tier so you can throw in a bunch of Im images and and figure out if it's um valuable to you and not be charged anything cool Oops. i love that as a tinkerer myself i love build playing around this text that's great to hear um i'm gonna pass it over to dan he's gonna close this out we're gonna uh squeeze in one quick plug for an event we have coming up in dallas next month Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Dave. Um, and thanks again to Nathan and Oliver and especially Dave for making this the easiest prop deck meetup I've ever had to participate in. Um, uh, I got to actually just sit back and watch uh, as opposed to uh, sometimes being in the middle of it. So thank you. Um, yeah, quick plug. Um, so we have our IOI Summit, Innovation Opportunity and Investment Summit uh, coming up in three weeks from today. Um, it's in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I see a number of you, you uh, uh, on this call are already joining us and hope that uh, many more of you can. Um, there are still tickets available and we have a promo code here for all of you kind of as a thank you for always participating and being part of our prop tech meetup and this community. Uh, it's $100 off. It's IOI 100. Um, it's an amazing event. Real estate practitioners, uh, technologists, investors, and then one of the biggest highlights is a pitch battle. We have 12 companies, startups that we've selected, and that will uh, happen Tuesday afternoon in Dallas on the 17th. Um, so uh, feel free to uh, scan the little image that Dave put on their QR code, um, and uh, hopefully we will see you there in Dallas. Um, and just want to uh, thank everybody for uh, joining us, and we will uh, be having another meetup about two months from now. We're trying to do this every other month. So uh, that should bring us all the way to September already. So with that said, uh, I hope uh, you guys have a great rest of your week and you're hopefully taking some time to enjoy the summer and we'll see you in a few months. Can't wait to see everyone again in person. Yes, that too. See you guys. Take care.